With cloud computing becoming one of the more important things in the world, one of the greatest aspects of that is reducing the size of the storage and the RAM that your applications consume. And we're going to look at that today with the advent of Docker containers and Go. Now before we get started, don't forget to like these videos as it really does mean something and give us good feedback. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build a Docker container in a two-stage process. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the number of files we have. We've got two files. One is a Docker file. One is a Golang uh, file. We have a main package here that is just a simple HTTP server to prove that we have a running server. Um, we're going to produce just a simple output. And the other file is the Docker file. And the Docker file shows us that we have two parts to this. So we've got a build image which in this case is based on the Golang Alpine image, and that's our build. From that, we're gonna go ahead and install on top of it, Git. We're gonna add a user account, which is gonna be our app account, so we're not using um, full-blown admin privileges. And we're gonna copy our files into the container, and then finally, we're gonna run the dependencies in case there are any in our Golang uh, program, and then last, we're gonna build it. Now, once that's built and those uh, are compiled, we're going to then switch to a brand new image, which in this case is going to be the scratch image. So no OS even, just the scratch image. We're going to copy into it the password file. We're going to copy into it our build file. And we're going to set up our user. And then last but not least, we're going to start the entry point, which in this case is our application. So now you've got all the steps that we're going to do. Well, let's go ahead and actually run that. So in this case, we're going to do the sudo docker build. We need to give our image a name. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and call it my app. And then the location of the file, which in this case, since we're already in the directory, is just going to be the dot. Now, to understand the difference between what are we building here and what the result would normally be, uh, a, a regular Alpine Golang image is somewhere in the region around 350 megabytes roughly. Uh, and we'll check out the images after this is built to give you an example of how big it is. Now, in my case, uh, my VM would normally take about two minutes to build this, so I've speeded up the video just a little bit so that you can see how it would run um, a little bit faster, depending on the speed of your VM, the size of the CPU, etc., how fast this will actually finish. In my case, it's 20 seconds because I sped up the video. Now, if we go ahead and now look at the Docker images, we'll get an indication of how big our application is, given that we've got a scratch image, which means there's no OS there, and just our Golang compiled files. So we've got basically something really super small here. So we've got 5.3 megabytes. 5.3 megabytes, I have literally Word files bigger than this. Anyway, we're now gonna go ahead and run that Docker file. So we're going to do a docker run d dash, and we're going to expose the port, so this is 80, and our internal port on our VM is 3000, because that's the one I set on my Golang file. Um, we're going to give it a name, and in this case we're going to call it example-app, um, and we're then going to specify the image this is coming from, which in this case is my app. So we're going to start off the container. And once that's running, we're just going to quickly check that this is running as we expected. Okay, we're going to go into a web browser, in this case Firefox, since this is my Ubuntu machine. And just simply confirm that the ports are all functional and all is good. So if we quickly do a, a docker ps-a, we'll see all the running containers as well as any stopped containers. We can see our current container has been running for about 17 seconds. Uh, we can see that it's exposed on port 80, so everything is fine so far. Uh, we launch Firefox, we go to localhost, and we're just going to go ahead and see what we get a response on. And the first one we get is a welcome to, and then that's perfect, that's absolutely what I expect to see. Now to prove that I'm not cheating here, we also have a subdirectory, in this case called app, and that also responds. So, all is good. Now that wraps it up for this video. If you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And as always, see you in the next video.